so we've we've touched on the term user journeys then did you want to talk a little bit more about that and just explain what they are <clears throat> yeah so let's assume more uh, the, the easiest analogy i can give you is that let's assume that we all go to a grocery we all goes uh, we all go to the same grocery same same shopping list same door we're gonna even pay with one card the only thing that will differentiate us in the grocery are the routes that we're going to go between the different aisles in order to pick up the same item. Even though that we have the same item list, each one of us will have a different routes within the grocery. Mm-hmm. And over time, we will have typical routes. So if we go back and if we do reverse back to the application, the analogy is that each one of us, even though that we're doing the same outcomes, we have different ways to go in the application and basically do all of these outcomes. And mm-hmm. over time, each one of us has its own typical ways of implementing things. So this is what we call a digital behavior fingerprint per user. Each one of us has its own way of doing these things in the applications, even though that we're probably doing very similar activities. So it's not about the end results. It's about the process, how we are doing the end results and how do we differentiate us. And if you look about big application like Salesforce, Oracle, SAP, ServiceNow, custom build applications, core business application. You have many different ways to implement the same more or less activities. Mm-hmm. And these are our digital behavior fingerprint that we monitor and tell you if there's uh, deviations. And, 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 and this is where, where the uniqueness of robust security. Okay, and uh, uh, but it, other than at the application layer, uh, the the explanation for user journeys is is a, a very good. That's a very good analogy that you use with the with the supermarket. I quite liken it to a morning routine where you might have a kind of a set morning routine, but you might do certain things out of sequence. Although you're doing the same things, uh, they might be slightly different uh, in those variations, like you know brushing your teeth or kind of going to the gym or whatever it is you do in the morning you know if you do the same things in order that's a sequence but one day you might decide to brush your teeth before you go to the gym or the other way around you know exactly so, exactly 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 so that but there are other in uh, you know there are other solutions that do this kind of thing uh that are out there today uh other than at the application layer what is it about your the way that you track user journeys uh, that's different? Or is that the differentiator? Is it because we're doing it at the application? Layer? As far as uh, we know, currently today, there are no other solutions in the market that actually analyzing user journeys. There are solutions like Cisco, NetFlow in the network. Mm-hmm. There are different EDRs that are doing this on the endpoints, but we there are no solutions that are doing user journey analytics in the application layer. In the application oh, layer, that's In correct, the application, yeah. application layer, there are none. And whereas all where all the other user behavior analytics are basically threshold based, and and you also mentioned something interesting. So you have a morning routine, maybe you have an afternoon routine or evening routines. Even though you go to the same supermarket with the same item list, mm-hmm. but you have many different ru- routines. And then you have to learn all of these routines and see if something deviates from that your standard and normal behavior. And this is this is this is the journey. This is the process that we're looking at. How are you doing things? Even though that all of us, or as a group of users, group of HR people, group of payment or finance team, basically doing more or less the same activities and results, but the way and the process, the flow that we're doing these activities are very different and mm-hmm. very individual. That's, that's really good. Um, so with regards to these uh, user journeys then, and I think it, it makes a lot of sense uh, for, our, for our audience now, it's, it's, it's very clear. Um, could you give some kind of typical examples how you've seen uh, applying this logic uh, and the user journeys, how they have specifically helped with uh, some kind of real life uh, insider threats, as it were? So um, I can give you a, a simple example of a consultant that comes to do some day job uh, at a certain large, large enterprise. And he was giving credentials. He was doing many, many different things, and and we were monitoring the his activities or many of the internal consultant activities in the cloud environments and Microsoft environments. And we were flagging some activities. And when these uh, uh, 
alerts were investigated by the incident response team and the SOC team, many questions have been raised. Why these consultants basically did and touched all of this area? Why they configure what, what they configured internally in the way they have done this? Now, if you don't have visibility into what these consultants are doing in the application, you basically have, you are blind. You don't know really what they have touched, even though that they, they came to do one specific thing, they can do many different things, many other things. They are trusted by the organization. They are privileged with, the, uh, with, with access to, to different things. And they can do many, many, many different things. What is your controls and ability to monitor and to get visibility into what they're doing? And if that doing bad things.